supporting the provost and me. There are so many things swirling around right now, new news stories hourly, and it can be easy to lose track of the core issues. But in this moment of uncertainty, my number one priority remains the health and safety of our community and fostering a culture of accountability. That really arose from my first few weeks at Michigan State University when I received the Office of Civil Rights Department of Education summary report on the university's response to the Nasser and Strample cases. The summary stated that a fundamental failure of the institution and its most senior leadership had been failure to report and failure to act on reports of sexual misconduct and relationship violence. The report identified individuals who had failed to report and called upon me to take action, and I did. I view that as our first steps together in changing the culture of MSU to one of transparency and accountability. But culture change is difficult, so I was not completely surprised at the provost's decision to hold the Dean of the College of Business accountable for failures of leadership related to Title IX was controversial with some members of campus. But I was very surprised when the board announced that it was hiring outside legal counsel to review this decision. As I said publicly then, and we reiterate here, that Dr. Gupta served in his role as Dean at the will of the provost, and she was well within her rights to make this leadership transition. I fully support this decision and the process utilized to come to this action. So I appreciate your efforts to maintain clear and distinct lines of responsibility for personnel and decisions in MSU, making sure that the administration, faculty, and staff maintain their autonomy in making these decisions, and to making sure our Title IX processes and outcome for any individual case is not subject to BOT Board of Trustee Appeals. As Barbara Snyder of the AAU said eloquently yesterday, micromanagement and partisan politics have no place on a healthy university board. And before I conclude, I did want to mention one thing that I think is important. And this is related to news stories that are out there. And I just wanted to give you uh, one statement, quick statement, if I can. This is, involves the certification process that's required by Michigan State um, for public universities to certify that one member of the board and the president have reviewed all cases that involve Title IX uh, with faculty and staff that have come to a decision and, and a hearing. I faithfully complied with this Michigan certification process the last two years and reviewed all the Title IX reports that were required. Contrary to information previously provided to me, in June of this year, just June 2022, I was notified that some of our board members may not have actually complied with their part of the state requirement in 2021. We asked for an internal audit and review of the situation, which raised questions about our compliance and made it clear that we can improve the processes by which the reviews were taking place. An external counsel, external consultant is now helping us improve the processes and keep us in compliance. We have been taking this issue very seriously. So I want to thank you again for joining tonight. Thank you for your efforts to understand these very complex things, but particularly thank you for your commitment to make sure that shared governance continues to work as it should work. Last year, I think, was a watershed opportunity for us to work together as administration and shared governance. I think we got many things accomplished to the betterment of the university, and I appreciate those efforts. We need to maintain the important distinctions that chairperson mentioned earlier and make sure that we're not falling into a situation where politics and other thing and uh, politics and other considerations uh, interfere with our academic mission. So thank you again and I'll close there.